What is up, investors? And welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show, where we bring you the latest and most important news moving the crypto markets every single day. Now, we are back today with part two of our FTX series, where we pretty much highlight everything in chronological order, starting from November 2nd, when it was in fact exposed that FTX and Alameda Research, its sister company, had a very shady balance sheet, leading him to CZ, forcing them into a liquidity crunch by selling the rest of their FTT, and then actually signing a non-abiding letter of intent to purchase them so this is what happened this is what we covered in part one of the video and part two of this video is going to cover everything from the entire legal team quitting at ftx over to the actual head team being on the run and currently under supervision in the bahamas and i do intend to make more parts as more of the news does unfold as obviously this is an ongoing story so without further ado it is time to sit back relax grab that cup of joe and enjoy Enjoy the show. Happy Wednesday, everyone. If you've not yet hit that sub, like, and notification bell, and join the Everything Crypto squad, please consider doing so, and I love and appreciate you all. Now, we're going to hop into the video here with part two, but just a quick recap on part one. We pretty much covered on November 2nd how Alameda Research had $14.6 billion worth of assets against $8 billion worth of liabilities. But what was really more concerning here was the fact that they actually reported having $5.82 billion of FTT token on their balance sheet when FTT only had a current market gap of $3.35 billion. Now, CZ, the Binance CEO, saw an opportunity here, in my opinion, to actually go ahead and force one of his competitors into a very tight spot. So he says that due to recent revelations that have come to light, they decided to liquidate any remaining FTT on their books. This did cause a massive sell-off in FTT token. It caused a lot of people to freak out and leave the FTX platform and only two days later it would appear that CZ's plan to work as FTX asked for their help with a significant liquidity crunch and Binance signed a non-binding letter of intent intending to fully acquire FTX.com. So this occurred on November 8th and now we're going to pick up from November 9th where in fact most of FTX's legal team quit the morning after the non-binding letter of intent was created by Binance and this definitely Definitely was not a very good look for FTX or the team behind it because obviously if the legal team thought there was something worth fighting or saving for they would have stuck around. So the fact that most of them quit did show right off the bat that there was probably a ton of shady stuff going on that the legal team did not want to even bother defending and that definitely already did not fare very well for Binance actually going through with that potential acquisition. Now on top of that, both the Alameda Research and the FTX Ventures websites did go dark. So once again, not a very good look for either platform causing a lot more panic within the community who was obviously already freaking out as FTX had paused withdrawals following their liquidity crunch and the FTX CEO did in fact confirm that more capital without more capital rather that bankruptcy looked very likely for the company and obviously they were looking to uh, to Binance to actually provide them with this liquidity to honor their customers withdrawals but unfortunately it was all announced on the same day that as a result of corporate due diligence as well as the latest news report regarding mishandled customer funds and alleged US agency investigations Binance decided that they will not pursue the potential acquisition of FTX.com. They say in the beginning, our hope was to be able to support our FTX's customers to provide liquidity, but the issues are beyond our control or ability to help. Every time a major player in the industry fails, retail consumers will suffer. We have seen over the last several years that the crypto ecosystem is becoming more resilient, and we believe in the time that outliers that misuse users' funds will be weeded out by the free market. As regulatory frameworks are developed and as the industry continues to evolve toward greater decentralization the ecosystem will grow stronger now what i found super interesting about this tweet was specifically this line here that this was regarding mishandled customer funds and alleged u.s agency investigations and this was effectively referring to rumors, unconfirmed rumors, but did look to be true that FTX tapped into customer funds to fund their very own risky bets, which did in fact set up the downfall of both of these companies. So it is rumored that crypto exchange FTX lent billions of dollars to their sister company that was in fact 
their customers' assets for some very risky DeFi trades. And this is a very similar thing that we did see with Celsius when the CEO took trading into his own hands, ignoring his entire trading team and actually trying to trade Bitcoin around the Fed meeting minutes, in which he did actually lose his customers' Bitcoin on his own irresponsible trade. Now, this looks very similar to what happened here as Sam Bankman Freed was actually using customer funds to fund riskier bets and not on FTX but through a sister company. And it would later be revealed that he did, in fact, set up a back door to outwit FTX compliance systems so that he could, in fact, actually move this money completely undetected. But we will get into that article a little bit later in the video. All you need to know for now is that Sam Bankman Freed was actually using customer funds to go ahead and, and fund his own riskier trades on the Alameda research side of things. And we finally did see him take to Twitter here on November 10th after all of the drama that happened from the 2nd to the 9th and really just following the conclusion of Binance not acquiring FTX, which did in fact signal that Sam Bankman fried pretty much did have to fold after a couple of days of trying to work things out. So he says here, I'm sorry, that's the biggest thing. I effed up and should have done better. I should have been communicating more very recently. Transparently, my hands were tied during the duration of the possible Binance deal. I wasn't particularly out the same much publicly but of course it's on me that we ended up there in the first place so here's an update on where things are this is about ftx international the non-us exchange ftx users are fine remember that because you're going to find out in just a little bit that sam bankman freed lied all the way even through his apology here so he says here that ftx international currently has a total market value of assets to collateral higher than client deposits but that is different from liquidity for delivery the full story here is that i'm still fleshing out every detail of it but on a very high level i effed up twice the first time a poor internal labeling of bank related accounts meant that i was substantially off on my sense of users margin i thought it was way lower so effectively what he's talking about here is the leverage to liquidity ratio and he says i'm not communicating enough i should have said more i'm sorry i was slammed with things to do and didn't give any updates to you and so we are where we are which sucks and that's on me i'm sorry so honestly, it kind of started off as an apology and just ended off as like a pity party for himself and not even addressing the main concerns here. The fact that he was using customer funds to back up his own trades through Alameda Research because this leverage to look to liquidity nonsense he's talking about that's garbage. This would have meant nothing if he actually did have a one to one backing of customer assets. So he says, anyway, or rather at least the damage could have been incredibly mitigated. So he's pretty much trying to avoid the main reason FTX went bankrupt by throwing another one in your face, which is not why people are upset in the first place, or which is not the main reason why these funds were halted. So he says, anyway, right now, my number one priority is doing right by users, and I'm going to do everything I can to do that, to take responsibility and do what I can. We are spending the week doing everything to raise liquidity. I can't make any promises about that, but I'm going to try and give anything I have to if that will make it work. There are a number of players who are in talks with LOIs, term sheets, etc. We'll see how that ends up. Obviously, a non-binding LOI means nothing as clearly indicated by what happened with Binance. He says every penny of that and of the existing collateral will go straight to users unless or until we have done a right by them and then after that investors. So what does that mean moving forward? I'm not sure that depends on what happens over the next week, but here are some things I know. First, one way or another, Alameda Research is winding down trading. I mean, that's kind of a given considering they don't have the money anymore to continue trading. Second, in any scenario in which FTX continues operating, its first priority will be radical transparency. And honestly, this I don't believe whatsoever because we can even sniff out some of the lies within this apology quote unquote paragraph alone. And the biggest one here that I do want to focus on is the fact that he said this was only about FTX International, FTX US is safe, and that Americans' funds were not at risk. So remember that when we do get later in the video. But obviously, in between that and uh, what we're going to talk about now, more stuff did go down, starting off with the fact that we actually saw Tether depeg from the dollar here. So the largest stablecoin issuer in the crypto market actually depegged from that dollar level all the way down to 98 cents. 98 8.8 cents so a decline of about 1.2 percent which is not a lot by crypto standards but definitely very important in terms of a stable coin because they should be stable so yes even a one percent move on a stable coin is enough to really freak out the markets especially one as big as tether and then it was announced here that tether actually froze 46 million dollars worth of usdt held by ftx following a law enforcement request 
so it was in fact being rumored and also displayed actually with some on-chain data and wallet addresses that it appeared like FTX was actually trying to short USDT or use USDT to make trades which was actually messing with the peg and none of this was confirmed but given the fact given the fact that USDT did lose their peg and then opted to freeze 46 million dollars worth of their very own token held by FTX definitely did suggest that there was something going on so they said here that they are starting to receive requests from law enforcement to temporarily freeze assets while an investigation occurs and you guys gotta listen to this because honestly we talked about this before on the channel we talked about circle blacklisting all the tornado cash addresses in line with u.s sanctions back in august and usdc did in fact catch a lot of slack for this move because a lot of the crypto community was on the side of tornado cash but given the fact that FTX is pretty much everybody's enemy right now in the crypto space, people seem to be letting this fly under the radar that yes, USDT did in fact freeze funds on law enforcement requests. And effectively, this shows you guys that these stable coins are no safer than honestly just holding cash in your bank. I've been saying this for a very long time. I think it sets a very concerning precedence that the two largest stable coins here by market cap can actually go ahead and freeze wallet addresses whenever they want. And to my understanding, even a cold wallet wallet is not a perfect fix for this because as soon as you do attempt to send the funds outside of the cold wallet they're effectively frozen on behalf of tether so definitely very concerning here kind of flying under the radar right now as people are more concerned about ftx but just something i wanted to put on your guys radar because i do think this will become a bigger issue in the future yet again and it does clearly show you what the government is looking to use stable coins for and that is effectively for cbdc's for the ability to monitor all of your transactions and effectively freeze your ability to make purchases which they cannot do at the moment with cash and obviously they do not like that but anyways moving on here to what we did see out of blockfi back in june this does date back to june as they did receive a 250 million dollar dollar credit facility from ftx and the proceeds were used to fulfill client balances across all accounts so we know that earlier in the year, Sam Bankman fried was playing White Knight, buying a ton of crypto exchanges or bailing them out on the cheap. People were calling him the JP Morgan of the crypto industry. And we, we were really warning here from the beginning of how shady this was, especially the fact that he actually owed Voyager about $376 million through Alameda Research. And instead of paying off Voyager to help them potentially claw themselves back from that Chapter 11 bankruptcy, he instead opted to buy them out through FTX. So he owed them money through one company and then he bought them out through another one. And I'm not saying that had he, had he paid back that loan, that it would have stopped Voyager from going bankrupt. In fact, it wouldn't have, I don't think. But the fact that they were about $1.2 in the hole and Alameda owed them about $375 million of that. And the fact that he opted to acquire Voyager instead of fulfilling his loan definitely did show some very shady intent from Sam Bankman fried I don't know how regulators let him get away with that in the first place. But besides the point, Point, he did also offer 250 million dollars here to BlockFi to continue operating. So the question now becomes: Well, if BlockFi was getting this money from FTX and FTX has no money, what happens to BlockFi? And we found out here on November 10th, as it was announced, as they said here on their Twitter, "We are shocked and dismayed by the news regarding FTX and Alameda. We, like the rest of the world, found out about the situation through Twitter. Given the lack of clarity on the status of FTX.com, FTX US, and Alameda." Alameda, we are not able to operate business as usual. Our priority has been and will continue to be to protect our clients and their interests. Until there is further clarity, we are limiting platform activity, including pausing client withdrawals as allowed under our terms. We will share more specifics as soon as possible. We request that clients not deposit to BlockFi wallet or interest accounts at this time. We intend to communicate as frequently as possible going forward, but anticipate that this will be less frequent than what our clients and other stakeholders are used to. So yes, BlockFi was in fact forced to halt withdrawals after FTX. The money that FTX lent them effectively did disappear as we did see that massive liquidity crunch and they did in fact halt withdrawals. So we are starting to see the ripple effects of what happened at FTX already. And I think that this is only going to continue in the coming weeks. I think BlockFi is only the first of at least a couple of exchanges or crypto companies that are going to announce some financial troubles based on this fallout. 
I sincerely hope not, but clearly FTX and Sam Bankman fried had some very deep ties to obviously like political parties, to the World Economic Forum, as well as other crypto exchanges. And I do believe that the damage here will take a while to sift itself out the same way that it did with Luna and Celsius, unfortunately. Now, I want to go back to this comment that he made about how everything he stated here was about FTX International. FTX US, the US-based exchange that accepts Americans, was not financially impacted. It is 100% liquid and every user could fully withdraw. So he said that on November 10th. And then we see here on November 11th that he did in fact file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy on FTX, on Alameda Research, and yes, also on FTX US. So once again, a perfect example of Sam Bankman Fried lying, okay? A day after he said that FTX US was completely liquid, he went ahead and declared the bankruptcy on FTX US as well. And he tweeted, Hi all, today I filed FTX, FTX US, and Alameda for voluntary Chapter 11 proceedings in the US. I'm really sorry again that we ended up here. Hopefully things can find a way to recover. Hopefully this can bring some amount of transparency, trust, and governance to them. Ultimately, hopefully it can be better for customers. This does not necessarily mean the end for the companies or their ability to provide value and funds to their customers chiefly and can be consistent with other routes. Ultimately, I'm optimistic that Mr. Ray and others can help provide whatever is best. I'm going to work on giving clarity when blah, blah, blah. You know what? None of that matters. The fact is once again here that Sam Bankman free just continued to lie to customers the whole way through this process, telling American users that FTX US was safe and then boom, also actually slapping them with that chapter 11 bankruptcy. So, I mean, what happened in 14 hours since Sam tweeted they were liquid and signing off on the bankruptcy docs? Who knows? I mean, we do know. The matter of fact is, I don't want to say the matter of fact, but it can be heavily implied that nothing happened, that they were not liquid, and that Sam Bankman Freed was bluffing and lying to customers once again. And he did also resign as CEO on the same day that he declared a bankruptcy on both of these companies. And that is not even when things get insane, because later that night, FTX was then hacked as the crypto disaster worsens, and they saw a mysterious outflows exceeding $600 million. Now, the reason that this is a little strange is because there are some rumors flying around this was in fact an insider job. And the first thing that was said here is it was actually tweeted by FTX that customers should not open their apps. In fact, they should delete their apps completely. And I did see some crypto influencers like BitBoy tweeting that this was actually a ploy by the FTX team to get people to delete their apps, which would also delete incriminating data as people did this. But another very interesting thing that was pointed out is the fact that not only FTX was hacked, but also FTX US. And that's weird because they are two completely different players platforms so obviously i'm sure they do run on some of the same software as they were designed by the same team but the matter of fact is is that ftx and ftx us are completely different platforms so the fact that both of them were hacked did indicate or did lead some people to believe that this was in fact an insider job and it was also revealed that sam bankman fried built a bespoke backdoor to outwit ftx compliance systems and this basically allowed him to move funds around without raising red flags to the rest of the ftx team he obviously denied that such a backdoor ever existed but clearly his word means about nothing at this point and this is how he was in fact able to move 10 billion dollars worth of funds from ftx to the sister trading firm alameda research so then it was announced on November 12th that Sam Bankman Freed was in fact in under supervision in the Bahamas looking to flee to Dubai with alongside two of his former FTX associates. So FTX CEO Sam Bankman Freed, co-founder Gary Wang and director of engineering Nishad Singh are understood to be in the Bahamas and are under supervision by local authorities. A source familiar with the matter told Cointelegraph that the three former FTX executives as well as Alameda Research CEO Caroline Ellison are looking for ways to flee to Dubai. While the plan was made assuming that the U.S. does not have any extradition treaties with the UAE, the nations did in fact sign a mutual legal assistance treaty back on February 24th of 2022 to work against criminals. So Caroline Ellison, the Alameda Research CEO, was not with them in the Bahamas. She was actually in Hong Kong, and it was suggested that she may in fact be able to get to Dubai through Hong Kong, pretty much proving here that Sam Bankman fried the FTX, and Alameda team have really been cowards about this whole thing and lying to their customers, despite saying that they want to help them, they want to honor withdrawals, 
clearly when you see people like this on the run it does not indicate that they are looking to face consequences and help their customers and i do wish this could be the end of the story that they were caught that people were refunded but unfortunately that was not the case in fact the part three here is actually going to pick up with sam bankman fried sending out some very cryptic tweets and what he was actually doing with these tweets to hide some very shady tactics on twitter including deleting incriminating tweets from his very own profile so without further ado i hope you guys did enjoy part two of this video i hope you are all having an amazing wednesday and hope to catch you in part three peace out for now